Welcome to Royal Education. My name is Mr. O, and today I'll be talking a little bit more about critical reading or the guide to critical reading, but if you missed part one, feel free to watch it, and the link will be below. And I'll be also providing the link to the specific critical reading passage that I have right here in front of me. Um, but today I'm going to be talking a little bit less about what strategies per se you could do um, on the critical reading itself and talk a little bit more about how to think in the mindset of improving on the critical reading, especially if you're struggling or you just feel like you keep making a lot of mistakes and ways that will help you understand one, how to conquer the critical reading and go for that perfect score, but at the same time understand the mentality that you need to put into in order to do better on this portion. And so before I go ahead and, you know, go into depth about, you know, this critical reading passage, I will be talking about these key points, which I shall put down a blank sheet just for this. So the main strategies you need to focus on are one, understanding that you don't, you don't need to read all words. What do I mean by that? So when I say you don't need to read all words, it's very important to recognize that not every single word will give you the information that you need in order to do well on the critical reading passage. So if I was to flip back into this portion, I want you to be aware that there's a lot of extra descriptors that are going to exist. The first portion right here, which you know is actually called the blurb, is useful information, so don't skip this part. But there are going to be parts when you're reading through this that you know are sort of useless, that are not going to contribute per se the importance or for you to understand how to do it. So what I mean by that is that when I'm reading this, they tell me right here, every day millions of shoppers hit the store full force, online and on foot, researching frantically for perfect gifts. Last year, Americans spent over $30 million in December alone. Okay. So a lot of times, especially for people who are um, ESL or English second learners, um, a lot of times they get stuck on trying to figure out every single word that exists. Um, but be aware that a lot of sort of you know keywords like the and of are not really important. Um, even for me, the, even the word like every day, this very first word right here is not important at all. What I read right off from the first two sentences that I just read to you real quick was that I got the idea right off that they're talking something about shoppers, you know, about the time when when they're buying a lot of gifts and when is it the peak season in which they're purchasing these items. Automatically, I have that idea in my head. Doesn't mean that I need to, you know, look through each single word or understand every single thing. It's just the idea that as long as I grab certain keywords that I notice, like keywords like shoppers, keywords like online, or like even the amount of money that's spent, the $10 billion that's spent in the retail, will help me sort of understand to some degree what this passage is talking about. Of course, um, when you're going through this, that sort of skill is also a little bit of practice and recognizing that you that you know you don't need to get stuck up on certain words and on top of that especially if you don't recognize a specific word that is stated in the passage their chances are one that word might be a vocabulary word asked in your, your critical reading passage but on top of that it might also be just a word you don't need or you or you just need some context like looking around the sentences before and after to fully understand what that word means but that being stated uh, most English learners or people who are reading uh, through this passage, we don't spend time on every single word. We just chop out a little bit of words and try to get just the idea of the passage and sort of fill in some details with some of the info that's given here and there. So that's the very first point I did want to emphasize. So continuing on to my second point. So my second point is this explicit thing, practice. So what I mean by practice is not just simply running through every passage and just being like, okay, I got number one, two, three done. All right, you know, like I finished these passages. I got this many wrong. Okay, next pa next critical reading passage. No, not not that is not at all the strategy you should be going for. And in all honesty, if you keep running through just different reading passages without one being critical about the mistakes you are making, so looking over mistakes, look over mistakes. But also, another important key is to look at your time. 
And what I mean by that is that when you're reading these passages, how long are you taking to read these passages? Are you taking maybe a minute to read the whole passage? Are you taking five minutes, 10 minutes? The important thing you have to recognize is that the, the, that you need to practice reading fast. That is not a skill that suddenly comes around or like everyone's given with. And it's not a skill that's actually taught in the public schools, even in the United States per se. Um, a lot of times that sort of skill is just developed over time. And it's something you have to be very conscientious about. So what do I mean by that? If for example, let's say, let's say the first attempt. The first attempt, it takes you five minutes. Let's, let's just give that amount of time for now. Be aware that this is actually a bit too much time to read on any passage. But let's say the first attempt, you take five minutes. And then you realize that when you take that five minutes and you do a thorough job reading through the passages and so on, you realize, hey, I, I could get most, if not all the questions correct. Then you know that that is the appropriate speed you should be going. Okay, and it's okay if you take even longer than that. The important thing when you're studying the critical reading passage is that you are taking a you you are going for quality and not quantity. So even if you are over the time limit for the critical reading passages, focus more on getting questions correct and then pushing towards improving your speed on the reading. And so let's say the first attempt, like I said, is five minutes. Let's say the second attempt, your next goal is to hit or finish passages within a four minute time. Okay, and so, so you have to do what we call like a scaffolding process where every time you're reading these passages or every certain number of passages, let's say you get comfortable, then push to four minutes and try to be just as accurate or just as good at getting these questions correct. If you are getting better at it again and again and again, you go for your third attempt, you know, push it to three minutes, push it to two. The recommendation usually is around one minute to a minute and a half, but do we know that this is not always the case? I know of some students that actually take their time on the reading, taking about three minutes to do the reading, but they run through the multiple choice portion very fast. Other students, like myself, are more preferable to read through it really fast in a minute or a minute and a half, and then we spend a little bit more time dissecting the question with the particular you know question that they're asking and the passage with it so that we end up getting it correct. But you know, each person is different. Each person has their own style of doing these questions. So definitely figure out what is your style when you're doing it. So that is my second main point. Third point I'm gonna emphasize is the word pattern. So what do I mean by pattern? So when you're looking at, at patterns of your mistake, uh, um, it's, it's usually based on when you finish up, let's say you finish up a whole critical reading section, usually um, usually those critical reading passages have like two or three different you know, passages that exist in each section. And so when you go through them and you start correcting your mistakes, start looking to see if there's a particular pattern that exists. One potential pattern that could exist is based on the passage topic. So personally for me, because I'm not, I'm not much of a science person myself. I love I prefer more of like history and reading that sort of passages. It ends up happening to happening to be that whenever I got a scientific passage that had like you know like the Latin words and whatever not, I ended up realizing I get a lot of mistakes on those. Maybe it's because partially maybe I'm a little bit bored of those passages, partially because Maybe I just felt like I didn't understand anything or it could also be a confidence issue where I was just like, wait, I, I'm not good at science. I'm going to bomb this portion. And that happens. Okay. But the important thing is that when you see that pattern, if it's passage based, then you need to do is force yourself to do a bunch of those type of passages. Make yourself read more of those passages. If you have old practice exams that have more scientific based passages, then you need to go back and do more of those scientific based passages and get that practice in. Start building that confidence and building the skill so that even if you get a like another scientific passage that you don't get um, thrown off by it and you build a better skill as to how to understand the passage, especially when it's relevant to scientific based topics. The other potential issue that some students face is more based on question type. And what do I mean by that? So when you're going through, when you go through multiple passages and let's say that you have a bunch of mistakes just spread out, it's not, it's not clumped into one specific passage, but it's usually spread out, then you have a different type of issue. Usually when you go through these questions and which I will do very soon, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to this page. Um, a lot of times when you're going through these passages and you're reading through it, what ends up happening 
is that you're going to end up trying to do these questions and then you're going to notice certain patterns that exist. So for example, if let's say, and I'm going to go up here and do you know, I'm not doing the problems per se. I'm just going to show you the idea or the concept behind this. So let's say number 12, I keep getting types of questions like number 12 wrong. And number 12 in particular, it says in line 10, the word ambivalent most nearly means. Whenever this type of question comes up, you have to recognize and be able to label it, it whether in your own terminologies or in a different, you know, books type of terminology. But if you get to questions like number 12 wrong, that means that, and consistently over multiple passages, this means that you have a vo vocabulary issue. And so it, sometimes the, the issue could be resolved by you just studying a lot more SAT words and so on. But sometimes it is more about context clues. And what I mean by context clues is that sometimes, um, even if you don't know the word, um, if you go back to the line 10, and I'm going to bring the paper back right here. If let's say I go back to number 10 and I see this word ambivalent right here, you should not. You should not. This is a big clue. You should not just focus in on this past this sentence right here. A lot of times the recommendation is that you go back maybe a sentence before, read it so you get the context of it, and then read afterwards a sentence just to see, you know, what does ambivalent actually means. Some students sometimes end up thinking that vote this type of thing like ambivalent, which is, you know, usually termed to be someone who's not very, you know, um who's not taking a side or feels like sort of, you know, he, he, he just doesn't care really about the situation or he's just in the middle sort of thing. Um, a lot of times students end up sometimes overdoing it where they think, oh, automatically it has to mean that and they choose. Or at times students just don't know the terminology. But that being stated, context clues are a lot more important for these type of questions. And so if you have trouble on this type of question, you want to start focusing and seeing what your mistake is. Are you being too broad? Are you being too literal? Are you being too focused? Or is it that you just didn't understand the main idea of the passage? Regardless, the important thing is that you need to start seeing these type of patterns. And if I was to, let's say, let's say I'm just choosing a random question here. Um, let's say you get... Let's, get, let's say you get number 14 wrong a lot. And I'm, I'm just choosing random questions that, you know, help. But let's say number 14, which says, which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? And so a lot of times these are like sort of like citation slash previous questions, previous questions sort of type of questions. But let's say you keep getting that wrong in not just this passage, but you get it wrong in the next passage, you get it wrong and you start noticing that you get this question wrong a lot. Start practicing and focusing on what you're doing wrong. Are you being too broad? Are you being too literal? And look at multiple ones of your mistakes to figure out what you need to do differently. The same type of strategy applies, whether it's you know this type or this, you know, this this type of question or this type of question. But the important thing in the end is that as long as you start being very, very, very critical about your mistakes and you know taking your time to really understand them, that will help you a lot to improve. There's no question about that. Um, and, you know, th just, just keep practicing. In the end, that sort of thing will help you, you know, improve. Um, but that being stated, yeah, no, just make sure you understand that that's what you need to do to improve. Okay, so that's number three. Number four. So for number four, and give me a second. Yeah, number four, I'm going to say, look for testing strategies that work. When I say testing strategies, I'm talking about the type of strategy that I showed in the first part of this video or this video series. So those are the strategies where I start annotating, you know, components like in the prior video. And I'm not going to go in depth on this because, you know, I recovered it in the previous video. But sometimes what I did was that I would look through like this passage right here, get the main idea, write three, like three key points, words or things and do that. That personally works for me. Um, I know some people don't do that and that this is particular based on people's different strategies and so on. But I know some people that, that do is that they actually read through this whole thing and they just underline a lot, you know, what we call annotation, where it's like, oh, okay, many dread, dread the thought of buying gifts. They underline throughout the passages saying, oh, these are some key concepts that they're, that's being covered. And then they, you know, and then they answer the questions afterwards. So it depends on the person. Uh, and depends on their pro proper strategy that they prefer. 
And that's where you have to explore and keep practicing it. So usually the strategies that are given, like the one I gave in the first video, are not supposed to be suddenly effective in the first attempt. It's something you develop, and it's something after a number of attempts, if you're really not improving and you're taking really this practice to heart, um, then you know maybe that's just not the best strategy. Maybe try to find another one. And so definitely look around and keep broadening the type of topics or strategies that you use um, so that you improve. Okay, so that's another key point that I had. Okay. Continuing on. So now to part number five. Number five, I'm going to just emphasize this, study vocabulary. And why, why do I say this? Because in the end of the day, critical reading and the ability to read, you know, to understand these passages does depend on you to some context to still study the vocabulary that exists. And that means you being very deliberate, um, maybe making yourself memorize like 10 words, 20 words per week, making note cards um, and putting a lot of those like SCT vocabulary words on one side, putting a definition on the other side, and then testing yourself constantly to keep improving yourself. Even though the emphasis on vocabulary is a little bit less now on the new SAT versus the old SAT, it's still as relevant. And I've seen students who after studying vocabulary and using strategies such as understanding Latin roots to just, you know, memorizing brute force words to, to you know, doing those different strategies, end up benefiting and improving unquestionably. And this is just because in the end, if you know too little words and you keep messing up, regardless of the fact is that you just need to know at least a baseline amount of words to help yourself improve, okay? Because in the end, no matter how much of these strategies that I have pointed out you, you could use, um, you know, you can't get away with it if you don't just can't understand the passage at all. And so I highly recommend just, you know, focusing on that piece of studying the vocabulary um, but that being stated to improve vocabulary or even improve your understanding of the reading the passages uh, some of my recommendations in general would be to you know read books uh, a lot of books here and there it doesn't have to be really difficult books in the beginning to start getting the hang of reading books because in the end that practice of reading helps you not only build the concentration you need so that you don't get so burned out after reading critical reading passages and so on, but also continues to build that vocabulary fluency. It builds the skill for, you know, strength and confidence you need in the critical reading portion. And it's just something that you, that, that takes time. And so critical reading is not something like math, unfortunately, where you could just do it right at once, you know, understand a rule and then suddenly you're good. You need to take time to develop the skill. And that's something I know I 100% believe everyone is capable of doing. And so I hope this is very helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll be continuing to make videos like this in the future. So if there's anything particular about critical reading or even anything else you want me to cover in a video, feel free to leave a comment below. Please do subscribe um, and you know check, out, check our website out. And I hope to see you again. Have a wonderful day.